Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to talk about freeware add-ons because yes, there are freeware add-ons available for Flight Sim and I would like to encourage more of this. So we're going to take a look at them and how they work in the sim and also how to install it, uh, at least as far as I understand it. There's one website that you can get them from, msfsaddons.org. I'm not affiliated with it in any way. Uh, there were other ways of getting add-ons previously for other flight sims. Uh, there was flightsim.com, there was avsim, though the formatting on those is a little bit dated. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, this is a little bit more of a spiffier website. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. These add-ons probably are on those other websites as well. I haven't checked. Uh, we will take a look at what we've got here. So as you can see, there's some payware over here. Uh, I'm not going to talk about those. Uh, we are going to talk about just the freeware, which includes these liveries here. There's the Clinks Mega Pack with 70 liveries. Uh, and this is mainly liveries for the A320, but they have added for the Icon A5, 747, uh, DA40, and Grand Caravan, as you can see. So I've installed this, and the way you do that is you go to your MSFS packages folder. Hopefully you note where that is. If you install it in the default location, it's somewhere buried in, in an inconvenient place. This is where your 90 gigabytes live and that 90 gigabytes is in the official folder. Uh, actually, for me, it looks like 100 gigabytes. Uh, and then there's a community folder over here where the mods go. So that's the MS, MFS packages folder, and you'll need to remember where that is. In my case, I decided to install it in a specific location so that I didn't have to go through all sorts of subfolders. And uh, the liveries pack are these. So that is how the liveries pack unzips. And what you want to make sure of is once you've unzipped it, that the next folder down has a sim objects. So if you see all of these, there's a sim objects here. Well, at least for the aircraft ones, there's a sim objects here and there's a sim objects here. So that'll ensure that you've unzipped it properly. If you don't have a sim objects after this uh, main folder, then you've probably unzipped it wrong at least for deliveries. Now, this Warsaw City is a freeware uh, by another vendor. I, uh, I, I can't pronounce the name, uh, something, uh, Driz, uh, anyway, uh, I'll leave it be. But there are three uh, airports that are added by this. And so this is a scenery setup and you note that the subfolders look different. So we'll have to take a look at the scenery at those airports to check that out. Uh, here, I think it's on this website as well. So if we go to Freeware, uh, you can see these airports. Ah, there's the name, D-R-Z-E-W-I-E-C-K-I. -E so that, these are the airports that are added under that Warsaw City folder. And you can get those as well. There are other uh, scenery changes like an Anchorage, Alaska water fix, Bergen, Norway fix there some Alps here, uh, Stonehenge. They didn't have uh, Stonehenge before? Oh, I gotta get that. Uh, <laughs> I didn't see that before. Uh, there's a plugin for a VFR map, which will be really helpful. So that's the in-browser map that it'll, uh, it's gonna go through localhost. So the game is going to send information through localhost to your browser so that you can look at it on a proper map, which is super helpful for navigating because we want to get into all the interesting places. Okay, and but another point about deliveries. Now you can see there's this mega pack, but then there's this other pack that also adds more liveries for the Cessna 208. The mega pack has liveries for the Cessna 208, and also this other livery pack does. That can conflict. This is important. Uh, so what's going to happen is this mega pack is going to say, okay, this is livery number one, livery number two, and livery number three. And this one is also going to say, this is livery number one, this is livery two, and this is livery number three. And you have to combine them. So instead of this one saying one through three and that one saying one through three, you're going to have to combine them into one file and they have to say one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to have to be like that. So um, maybe at some point I'll make a video about that, assuming I've got to work properly. But now main thing that I'm interested in for the purpose of this video is check out improvements on the A320 Neo. So uh, this is an improved A320 Neo and 
it says something about the Electronic Centralized Aircraft Monitor System, ECAM. And we have a new air, new-ish aircraft. It's a modification on one of the default aircraft, the DR-400. We've got in the game by default a uh, slower version. You can see the default one is 100. Uh, I mean, I, I guess that might be 100 horsepower. Uh, but this one is actually 160 horsepower. So higher cruise speed. It's got more endurance, so I guess it's heavier. So we'll see how this does. I'll fly them back to back and compare them in this video. So uh, that is something else you can download. This is the first um, sort of different plane that we've got available for Flight Sim. So congratulations, Dranbar. <laughs> and, but again, it's a modification, but that's how it usually is with Flight Sim. The first freeware planes are usually just modifications on the existing planes. Okay, so we're gonna try out one of the Warsaw City airports that were freeware. So EK, EPKU, Konstantin uh, Jezierna Airfield. And that is there. I'm going to change the time of things because otherwise we won't be able to see stuff properly. Um, we'll allow live traffic for fun, hopefully. I mean, hopefully it isn't going to be like Dubai where people run into me or anything and live weather otherwise. And, oh. okay. And we will try out the original Robin, the R400. So where are we? So here is the DR400-100 or slash 100. That is the original one. And this is the add-on one. Uh, so we'll try the add-on one afterwards. But let's check our other liveries. So for the A320, we can see that we have a huge variety of liveries. And again, for this, you really only need that one mega livery pack. Some of them have proper icons. Some of them just have the logo. The one I'm most interested in and we'll see in this video hopefully is this Pan Am one. And so after I check out the Robins, we will check out that Pan Am livery, which is, of course is fictional, but still interesting to me. I like Pan Am. So uh, otherwise there are a smattering of liveries that are not associated with the A320. Okay, so the only time I've tried this plane I think is in the Kirchevel challenge. And I thought it could do with a little bit more power, so we'll see. So, but this is the less powered one. And I think the main facilities are over to the forward left. Judging from the images on the website. So we'll have to take a look. Got some cars. Oh, let me trim a bit. So we see a building over here. I think this is mainly the deal. These buildings right here. I mean, this is early freeware scenery from a uh, normally payware vendor. So probably just testing out their capabilities at this point. Alright, so I need to do a performance test with this. So I'm going to keep it at um, full throttle and I'm going to trim to level and see how fast it tops out at. And then if it uh, is threatening to overspeed, I'll uh, throttle back to a particular RPM and judge from that. So taking a look around. I need to use the drone cam more. I need some practice using that. 
Okay, we're pretty level now. Vertical speed zero. It's ticking up a little bit. Okay, no, it's going up again. Trim down more. But we're looking at 112, 113-ish. That's where we're at. Full throttle. At uh, 1,000 feet, let's call it. Yeah, and it's just wobbling around zero on the vertical speed, so... That's basically it. 112, 113-ish. Let's see how the new Robin does. And this time we'll try a different one of those freeware airports. EP... A... Was it U or Q? Um, no, U was the one we just did. Q. So... Karsu? I don't know. These are uh, tough ones for me. Anyway, so we're going to try out the Dauphin. And, you know, cruise speed 115, it basically did that sort of thing. We didn't test the max altitude or endurance. I've had some endurance problems with some of the planes, I have to say. But anyway, we'll broach that subject later. Okay, so this is EPKQ. There's obvious grass. I'm not too sure if there's buildings around. Whoa, I'm low in the grass. <laughs> I mean, the interior should be exactly the same, unless I'm mistaken. I don't think... I mean, it'd be very difficult to... I mean, interiors are tough. Interiors are tough. Let me just leave it at that. So... And the exterior is the same. So it's just a matter of swapping one engine in for another. As far as I can tell. And then tweaking other numbers. And we'll see whether it alters the feel very much at all. Some cars over there. The problem with the new scenery is, I don't know what constitutes the new scenery and what was there before, because, I mean, maybe I should have taken a look beforehand to see what it looked like before I added the new scenery. So there's the EPKW strip. Okay, let's do a speed test. About one thousand feet again. Already, while we're climbing, we're going one fourteen, so that's already better. I think it's got more power than it was advertising. It's at cruise speed one twenty. I think it's got it's faster than that even. That's the airspeed, not the ground speed, so the wind shouldn't be a matter here. It does require more trimming down. Okay, I think we're hovering around zero now. It's a little bit more variation than before, but it's basically plus and minus 70 feet per minute, and we're going about 130. So that's good. I'll try it. Uh, we'll turn around and try it in the opposite direction just in case there's some problem there. But better than advertised results, if you will. I think it's pretty consistent. Uh, we're wobbling between 200 FPS plus and minus. FPM, I mean. And it's sort of stabilizing on that. And we're going 130 again. So, about 130 knots here for this version. So much better than the previous version. Otherwise, fairly easy to handle. Well. Now I want to check out the Pan Am livery on the Airbus 320 and also see how that handles now. But we can't take off from the third of the Polish airports, the Warsaw City airports that were offered in that freeware pack. 
So I'm going to take off uh, adjacent to another location that I wanted to see myself, and that is Venice. Okay, well, it is a very interesting Pan Am livery. Let us get a better look instead of the automated cams here. The interior is nominal. We are taking off from LIPZ. And we're just gonna do a quick sightsee of Venice. Because I wanted to. The iPad's gone. Interesting. It's a blue nose Pan Am livery, which is also interesting. Very sleek looking. That is not me trimming the plane. So there's Venice. And there's the overspeed thing again. But that's fine, I don't want to go very fast. Whoa! It throttled down, wait, wow. I, I This is my throttle setting right here. It throttled down way far. That's crazy. Okay, can I... Let me just temporarily th turn that off. I don't know if that's going to help anything. Okay, well... Uh, yeah, it's going to be a pain again. <laughs> but at least we'll take a look at the trim and see if the auto trim tries to max out again. That's another thing. But Venice is looking good. This is just stock Venice. This isn't an uh, add-on or anything, obviously. I didn't even know there was that island there. No, maybe I just forgot about it. Sorry people on that island that I forgot about you. Every other flight sim I've tried to fly over Venice, it's been... I mean, I've tried to get good scenery for it and it's been a lot of lag. So, this is very different. Let's take a good look at those canals. You know, the Icon A5 might be good with these canals. 500, 400. I don't know. Okay, well, it's, now it's choppy. Now I'm really pushing it. 300. Took a lot, though. Big cruise ships. Not very well textured cruise ships, either. I don't know why they have to have those. Just have, a like, a, one cruise ship and... And you don't have to have those. Maybe under ultra detail, the cruise ships won't have like bad paint job markings. Yeah, I mean, uh, the bridges are the same way. The bridges always have issues, I feel like. And they could just get by with just a single bridge model for half of them. Simplify things. Okay, I think I'm gonna try and land it. I, I'm satisfied. This is very much Venice. No problem with that. And that's a Pam Pan Am livery. I was not expecting this particular Pan Am livery, I'll have to admit, but... Um, it is a Pan Am livery, for sure. Come on, baby, you hold together. <laughs> oh. oh, that's too much lift. Sixty, fifty, forty, thirty, twenty, retard. Uh, that felt horrible. Ah. Uh. Nope, still don't get it. Oh, we've got the ground handling assist. So, uh, for, for reference, there's all these assistant things. I got uh, um, ATC voices on. I don't know why that's uh, 
assistance that makes it less than hard. I don't know. I thought that would be more realistic, but um, smart cam mode, I think, I don't understand that anyway. The, but the taxi ribbon I put on, that's what I've got there. This is the first time I'm using this taxi ribbon thing. Obviously, it is less realisms than trying to remember the taxi path, but... Oh god! Okay. We've had a problem. Oh, th no, th it's actually indicating that this is the destination. Okay, I see. I'm going like, there's barriers, what? No, this is it's just indicating the spot, I guess. Okay. This is my first time seeing this animation with the jetway coming out. I went a little bit too far there. That's nifty. That's super nifty. With the jetway coming out like that. Ooh. Okay. Alright then. Uh, with that little uh, additional bit, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.